Hello everyone, I'm back, Schultzy, I'm back, and honestly, okay, honestly I've been enjoying this game, I've been playing it more and more and more and more and more and more and more, and I don't know how many hours I have of gameplay, I mean that's how much I've been playing it. I've started several characters and I'm enjoying this, and Claptrap seems to be my, f is, is no longer my f favorite character. They actually have a, they have a, f a, f a ton of future side quests that are really fun and enjoyable. But the first thing I'd like to say after that massive rambling is that I found that fully automatic weapons are not that good. And it may be just for me, just may, just may be just for me that I cannot control the recoil, maybe that, but I've been noticing that the semi-auto weapons have a tendency to do a little bit more damage, and honestly, I can hammer on that trigger like it's like it's nothing and shoot really fast and almost keep up with some of the rate of fire of these other guns. I've been noticing I've been able to have higher accuracy with these semi-auto weapons and just really, really just tear into these guys. And also, I've been also noticing that the revolvers have the same kind of quality, that they have a nice, strong kinetic hit that just smashes into you and blows the crap out of these enemies. And I honestly think that this was the strongest point, and I've also noticed some little hiccups here and there that um, it takes a while for sniper rifles to actually have different variety and stuff like that. And uh, that's a little uh, downer, but it's honestly, they did kind of change it up. At first, I've been thinking, after playing for so many hours, like, who, 30, 40 hours at least? From last I checked, and I know I've already clocked some more before I even finished this video, because I don't always put these up. I kind of save them on the side, not, but I'm digressing. But I've noticed the sniper rifles... The bolt action, if they have a bolt action, they don't always work on there. Be it, I might be just the, I may not have had the, found the right bolt action one, but I've just been noticing that the bolt actions don't always work. And also picking up epin, weapons and I, uh, I, money and ammunition and stuff like this on the ground doesn't always work. And even if you hold the uh, blue button or the hold down the button, the whole pick them all up, they don't seem to be always working. Ah, uh, and honestly, that they don't, they also have a lot of good characters in there. They're fun. Ah, uh, Pekaret. But no, it's just that, honestly, that honestly I've been noticing that the best weapons to actually be using are the semi-auto uh, assault rifles and the revolvers, because they have a high enough damage rating, and you can hammer on the uh, trigger really quickly and just have highly accurate, highly damaging weapons. And it seems like also the fact that you need to have a... Honestly, if you don't have... The, there's these two elements that you have to have with you almost at all times, no matter what. And one weapon, a uh, special weapon you have to have on the side. It's, you don't need a sniper rifle, that's just optional. Honestly, later on you can beef it up, but that's besides the point. But you always need a... It seems like for me, or at least I think it's just for me, but it, an assault rifle, and I preferably a semi-auto, and a handgun. These are the two major weapons because honestly you're going to need something that you can do a faster rate of fire, and honestly I'm just doing it slowly, slowly until I can get used to it. This is early gameplay, and later on I'll show you uh, future uh, later gameplay. But I've also been noticing that the two elements, uh, elemental damage weapons you might be needing uh, a lot of is acid and flame. Uh, electricity is really good against shields, but it seems to be okay. It seems that you need to be using more acid and fire. And the main only reason why is the fact that you'll be fighting robots, and even if you have a very, very strong weapon that can deal insane amount, insane amount of damage, there happens they happen to be absorbing able to absorb it a lot. And if you do a acid damage, it will eat right through the armor and does extra damage against robots. And I've just just been noticing that that if you have to say honestly, these are the two t uh, two elements. And also, I always suggest keep a rocket launcher in your back pocket. Always have one rocket launcher in your back pocket. And the reason for this is the fact that sometimes you'll face bosses and you'll need a huge shitload of firepower and it seems that a rocket launcher that you can pull out of your uh, back pocket can just, just dominate without really real light and I never really thought about that um, and honestly you'll be not needing money in this game honestly playing through with it I barely use it There's you usually get better weapons from loot drops and stuff like that and it's like I, I, I understand that there just, there just seems to be a little balancing problems here and there, and I think it's just semantics that honestly I'm looking, excuse me, a little too much into it. And honestly, that that, that is, seems to be the whole problem is the fact that 
you you're not you, there's no real use for the money whatsoever money is completely worthless in this game honestly other than picking up ammo that's all it is and then honestly the only currency and the um, points that you need to be worrying about is the iridium iridium seems to be the focus that you need to grab to because you'll you'll use it to have a larger um, capacity of holding ammo a larger uh, backpack size and whatnot and that seems to be the only useful currency and I'm a little disappointed because I would I would have liked to see more weapons um, uh, more more the money be used more because honestly I got 40 50 seven four, yeah forty thousand dollars and I barely use it and most of the items I pick are pretty cheap and I know some of may say oh you're not far enough in you just started so many characters honestly I've never really need to worry about this and it bothers me that money seems to be yet again useless and honestly the biggest importance is to find the weapons that you use the most and grab a ton of uh, uh, opening up on the ammo capacity and your backpack capacity seem to be the most poor crap clap trap oh I agree with you on some people like that I don't think clap trap he's just silly oh sir hammerlock actually I like him he actually recurs throughout the whole series so far throughout the whole game and it's not just this early part and it's honestly he is a very good character I wasn't expecting the first character you to meet other than the uh, claptrap to be actually pretty good they do have a nice sense of humor with all their characters and I really wasn't expecting such diversity and humor with this all these other characters I thought they were gonna just leave it with the primary ones and honestly the story they put in there is just a light eh, if ooh, eh, eh, thing I don't even know how to describe it that the story is just enough there if you want it but side quests do explore more of Pandera, more of the characters and stuff like that. And that is a good thing. I like that if you want to, that the main quest just gives you enough kind of to uh, make you want to hate the character of Handsome Jack. Makes you want to help people. Makes you want to continue. And the loot is like, ooh, this is cool. I get new weapons, new this. It's a, it's a dangling carrot. Um, um, uh, Pavlov's theory, um, uh, whatever the Skinner box test and stuff like that. They do all these little things that, yes, are addictive, that honestly is probably bad for gamers, but they do know how to, um, pace it, and honestly, all the problems, not all, many of the problems were just kind of glossed over. They, they're still significant problems, but, uh, but they are so minor in theory that doesn't matter and the only honestly you'll be running along around a lot and I mean a lot it's not like uh, okay here and there it's the same problem that was in the first one you'll be uh, hoofing it left and right back and forth and that's my only dislike of it is that you will have to be doing that a lot you'll have to be just trucking it back and forth because there's no the uh, the fast travel system is back it's there it's pretty good but I feel that there needs to be more spots that you can fast travel to, not just like one per area or something like that. It just seems to be lacking. That honestly, I feel that you should, you need more of those. And and then and someone may be saying, oh, that just you got to run through these things. It's like I understand, but it's the fact that if someone wants to really just go through it, it can't really speed run this game so easily because you don't have. To, it's just a fact that it's a it's a little disappointing on that aspect and I know some people say oh it's great you can see the environments and it's like if I've already been this game for God knows how many hours and I'm getting bored with just huffing it around I think you should have the ability to fast travel quicker because you will be like the problem with the first one you'll be running around a lot yes you get the vehicle before it happens but it really is annoying that you do have to uh, hoof it around and it's like honestly it may be sounding like I'm really ripping it a new one but it, it is fun and honestly, the new weapons that you get do take some time to unlock, and it takes some time, and it's it's a little bothersome to me because I really wish they didn't take so long because it was a good game. And I also feel, as I said, I think I said this before that they do sh should give you special power up of for your character a lot earlier. I understand why they're doing it so it doesn't ha uh, throw too much stuff to you, but it bothers me because it, you really need to be getting all your items a little bit faster because honestly playing one hour in give or take and then getting kind of your aspects your final piece in the puzzle what you're going to do bothers me because there's more to this than just just shooting your power-ups and it's like oh okay ah excuse me and it's like oh it's like you have so much potential and it's it's still really good and i know 
that this is not always the greatest. It's not always, oh, it's so great. But it's a, it's and also the fact that this game is definitely a game you have to play co-op. Without someone else playing with it, it loses something. It it, it lacks some soul. It does a lot to keep you from getting bored, but you really do need to have someone playing with you because it gives you it, it lets those parts that if you're running around not seem as dull because it will seem as dull as freaking hell. And also, biggest thing is the first thing if you should do when you get use the badass points, use them in recoil reduction, health, and shields. Those are the major areas you should do first. Is recoil reduction is the most important area to focus on, is because it allow you to later on start slamming down on the trigger even faster. And it just it, and honestly, yes, you have upgrades that do more points to it. But those are the areas that I feel you should gently work on. Using badass points are the best areas to focus. Uh, the use immediately kind of gives you a little boost here and there. Your health is important, but honestly, recoil reduction, because you're going to be doing this a lot, and when you have a high level of recoil reduction, you can start hammering on that trigger and ripping people open like it was nothing without a worry. And honestly, as you can see, semi-auto, you can control the speed of your round and have higher accuracy, because you can see that I'm getting a little more critical than if I was doing uh, bursting my weapons or whatnot, and... Honestly, I've never really had fun with burst weapons in these in this type of game. It's like it, I also have a affinity with ha uh, slamming on the trigger. Just something in me. I think it's the fact that it gives me a better feel feedback than not having the, feeling the actual recoil of a weapon when you're using a full auto weapon. And it's just that these are the little things that you'll learn and understand and you'll feel when you're playing this game. And honestly, the biggest one, as I said before, is make sure you have the powerful um, the uh, acid and fire damage in one of your weapons immediately. These are the most important things you'll need to use because if you start fighting against certain uh, creatures or people, you'll be thanking yourself. And honestly, and also keep a rocket in your back pocket because some of the bosses you do fight, the ability to just dish out an insane amount of damage by these rockets sometimes is more important so you can drop their shields or, or, or bring their health down really quickly because they can absorb, absorb a lot of damage. And I feel it's something that many people don't think on and they just think, oh, here's my primary weapon, go through it. Your backpack is the most important weapon, and the fact that you need to leave at least one uh, one or two extra special weapons for extreme emergencies to use, and, someone may, and, and stuff like that, that rock it in your back pocket, and always make sure that's as best as you can get it and use it. Um, using semi-auto weapons that you can uh, shoot as fast as you can pull the trigger seem to do a lot better damage and hold out a lot longer in the long term and whatnot. And right now, I'm going to pause for a second. And honestly, if you can hear that, it's that silliness that, that's there. If you couldn't see it, I'm sorry. Um, but it's like, this is why that um, games need this colorful humor. Even if it's bad, I would rather have bad humor in games than the always con uh, constant uber seriousness. And this is why... Borderlands will probably have this. It has this really cult falling love, even and it made it big. Is because that this humor is what is needed in games. I feel that that's been lacking, and most people just don't don't really uh, sit in there and enjoy it. And we just play and drone on. And the fact that someone like me who likes listening to several different aspects of these games and enjoys games and more than just the gameplay aspect aspect or the aesthetics or what they can bring, sometimes I want a game that can make me laugh. Or if they can't make me laugh, at least make me smile. Because if you can't do one, at least put a smirk on someone's face because that, I feel, shows that you're very good, you're competent. And yes, jokes don't always hold up over time, but that is not something to keep you from putting humor in your games. Captain Flint's death is prolonged as possible, would you? Quite the douche he is. And just hearing, I mean, just little lines like that, it's just that they gave a little more inflection. Yes, the actions and... Do you see my hat? It is the hat of a gentleman. Eh. And yet it's missing something. Some... Jesse Qua. I think some bullymong fur might do the trick if you could bring me some. To harvest bullymong fur, you'll need to rip it from their hides with your bare hands. Just weaken a bully mong with gunfire, then finish him off with fisticuffs. And honestly, they, they do give you these kind of wacky, crazy quests, and I do feel that 
This game knows how to handle itself with its quest at it. Jeez. But no, that I mean, this is the stuff that you, just listen to it. You you just have this snicker. This. Sm Be careful taking down Boo Boo. <laughs> but you know, what I'm saying it's like honestly, it's this 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 tone that's always put in the game, and I think that's why people love it so much. Is that it has this tone. But no, it's like little stuff like that. Um, introducing the main villain still throughout the early levels is a great way to um, make the character want to hate them. And this is kind of why I do feel that what makes it so good is the fact that this your major villain that you have to deal with is still up there with you, and you're not supposed to like him. And they're reinforcing this. Even in silly ways, they reinforce the fact that you're not supposed to like him. And I feel that's the best thing they could have done, is the fact that you need to, uh, these villains in some of these other games just don't have the same impact, and they know that to make sure a villain has this strong impact of you want to fight against them and kill them, it's even stuff like this, this this little side quest that will come up uh, back later on, they, they, they make the villain as hateable and as, dis as much as you can dislike him as possible, and that's the perfect thing to do is because you really do need to have characters that you have to find a reason why you want to keep on doing other than for gameplay and stuff like that. And this is something that I feel the industry is finally growing is growing and learning that um, Call of Duty villains or or these generic villains don't cut it, that we need a little more depth to our hatred. And I know that sounds horrible, but we need to hate people in video games, these villains, for a better reason other than they're the villain. And just giving me a small cutscene in the beginning does not um, set up a scene I feel good enough does not set up the scene good enough for you to hate them. You need to have scenes that are these these like like this you start it off really long and people may complain oh that's too much time it's like the villain needs to be constantly belittling you making fun of you insulting you and that's a lot of dialogue work and that's a lot of work but you need that you need this constant um push of the villain hates you and that without with this not giving a villain his time to um show his hate it's something that, honestly, many game designs don't, uh, like Call of Duty, there's no real villain. I don't care how, how, how much it's talked about, oh, this is a great villain. It's that you may have, st they give the villain you the hate, but they don't give it in the way that you should, where, like, even Pierre Molyneux, uh, with his Fable series, oh, you'll love these characters. Well, the fact that the Fable 3, oh, I walk around for, like, a couple minutes, and I don't hate, I don't, care about this character whatsoever I have to sacrifice him I wouldn't it's like you need to give a couple missions other than holding someone's hand you have to actually have them you have to you gotta this beginning part is always the hardest you need to catch someone sequels or not you if you want to make a person like this you have to give a better reason other than showing them cutscenes and this is the best way is have this dialogue tree that makes you really like them and in this one they do other than the cutscene in the beginning oh you get blown up the train the guy's trying to kill you okay that's a generic uh, way to hate him but they also put in this beginning him constantly mocking you insulting you belittling you verbally attacking you and I feel it's a great way to make you hate the character and a great way to kind of draw you in to keep on saying, I want to go have handsome, handsome Jack. He's a douchebag. You can relate to a jackass and a douchebag. Like, this guy's a massive douche. I want to be the crap out of him. He's a douche. He deserves to get his, his face pushed in, his ass shoved in. This is, this is kind of why I feel that Borderlands writing is not the greatest, but it's a nice stepping stone to see that... Um, that other games can pick up on this and slowly, bit by bit, we can mature as an industry on uh, telling better stories. And I don't mean mature in the sense of, um, uh, what, what was it, Max Payne and whatnot and the dark and gritty, but mature in this, and I feel mat true maturity that 
Every, um, have you, if you don't see these, uh, adults are not always these prim and proper. You'll have people who have guttural humor. Uh, I'll be one of them that will make fart jokes and genital jokes and whatnot all the time. I will get into that. I don't feel comfortable doing it yet. And when you finally hear me making these, cracking these jokes and telling goofy stories, you will understand that being a mature person is not always being prim and proper 24-7 and that, or being intense and serious. And this is why games need this... In games, this somewhat release valve of goofy and silly nature, and this is this is what Borderlands is doing, and I feel it's almost the proper balance, but I feel that the only thing that's holding it back is there's too much running in between places, which honestly, for what this is, is an open world RPG shooter, whatever loot hunting Diablo thing. Honestly, it, 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 I'm bothered by it because they had it was so much more stuff they can do with it, but what they had is still very good. I would say, and I will say, this would be so far. Unless I find anything so far, I think this might be my co-op game of the year. There may be um, the only other one that might do it would be Syndicate. I think came out earlier this year, but only reason why I say Syndicate won't be it. It doesn't have a long enough shelf life, which is sad. Which it's a very good gameplay with very good mechanics, but it's the fact that this is this is what. Um, why, another reason why I say that this will be a, is a good one, is that the sense of humor is something that can also drive people to want to play the game more. Um, that if you're going to constantly laugh and joke and, and ha hear these characters crack jokes, you're having a light sense of humor, even though you're massacring millions of people. This is the type of humor that you kind of need in games and need in even these type of serious games. that You need something to balance, and all these games have not had balance, and this is a game that in a long time has finally had a balance and doesn't give you a reason just kill the guy. It's kill this guy, get revenge, because he's a massive douche. He wants to kill you, and it's not just... And he also, at every time that he can, he's going to make fun of you, belittle you, rip into you, and just constantly be, as they said, a massive douche. Bye bye. I mean, even that, even hearing the 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 raiders screaming, crying, and the midgets just bye bye, and these cutesy, just random, wacky voices. This is something that Gearbox and the developers and the writers know that if you're making a game, you're doing the same repetitive motion over and over again. And this silly, wacky, zany thing is kind of what is needed, and kind of is is kind of is what saves the game from being a dull, banal Call of Duty, and not just the art style. The art style helps a lot. This colorful notions, these color, this colorful game allows the ability to have this colorful universe, colorful language without problems. And has and, it, and, it, and it, you won't laugh, that you'll be laughing that you blew someone's head off, but it's not that it's a real person like Call of Duty that tries to push this realism, or Battlefield, and any humor that's put in those games seems in poor taste, where this game is shameless and it doesn't seem bad. It doesn't seem goof. It doesn't seem bad that you're just making fun of what you're doing because the game is not supposed to be taken 100% seriously, and any serious moments will all automatically be balanced by humor and goofy nature and silly and zany stuff that, honestly, more games need. And I'm not saying every game needs to be Borderlands or sillier or goofy, but we need games that don't take itself too seriously because as a community, I've got, I'm honestly tired of these super serious games unless the gameplay is very good. And we haven't had very good gameplay. It's, uh, cause honestly, honestly, the one other, only, there's only a handful of serious games I'm looking forward to. And it's not because, and it's mainly because the style is pretty good and the gameplay is completely different from what we're doing. Cause I'm not, I'm tired of serious first person shooters, but a serious stealth action game, a serious art, uh, Real-time, uh, not real-time, a uh, turn-based strategy game. That kind of sounds really interesting. I mean, if you think about it, this this juxtaposition of different elements of in games we need to focus more on. And also, here's the other thing: go for he uh, higher shields. Never forget about getting better and better shields. There's different elements which I will go on later on. But honestly, that's sorry. I I know I'm rambling. I know mostly people are gonna say, "Shut up, just give us stuff." Come on, Schultzy. I am sub and sub. You know what? I understand. I'm sorry I'm rambling. I like rambling on and talking. Honestly, it helps me. I'm enjoying this self. I'm going to keep on doing this. I will always say, please 
like, favorite, and subscribe. And honestly, I'm going to probably stop right about now. But I'd like to everyone say thank you for joining me. Please like, favorite, subscribe. I hope these little tips, my ramblings, my thoughts on this game have given you insight into this game, why I like it and whatnot. And I will be continuing on with my other series. I'm just going to be bouncing back and forth. I'm really enjoying what I'm doing. And I'd like to say, everyone, thank you for joining me. And I'd like to say thank you and good night.